Hello, everybody. For our next project together, we are going to be working with watercolor paints. Okay, and one of the cool things about watercolor paints is that there are literally hundreds of different techniques that you can use in combination with the paint to create these really awesome and interesting effects. You can see an example of what we're going to be doing right now uh, here. Uh, so there are seven different techniques laid out on this little grid here. Each box I've experimented with a different technique, and now I can see the resulting effects once the paint has dried. So we're going to be working on making this together here to start our next project, so you can get a little bit more familiar with some of the different things that watercolor paints can do. Uh, to get started, I'm going to grab a piece of my 9x6 watercolor paper, and I'm just going to lay a simple grid to create eight different boxes on my paper. I'm going to grab a ruler for that, but you can easily freehand this. But I do need eight boxes because I've got seven different techniques to show you, and then one box left over to kind of play around with. There we go. At the bottom of each of my boxes, I'm going to write the different technique that I'll be using in that box. Okay, I'm going to show you seven, uh, seven different techniques today, starting with what is called wet on dry painting. And I'll show you that in a moment. After that, I'm going to show you wet on wet painting. We'll also be working with some salt, rubbing alcohol, soap, we're going to be doing a wax resist, and I'll talk about what that means when I get there. I'll need a little plastic wrap, and then finally a section for you to experiment on using multiple different techniques together to see what the, uh, the results look like, okay? So now that I've got my grid laid out and every single one of my boxes here is labeled, I'm going to need my watercolor paints, okay? So I've got those here, and along with my watercolor paints, I obviously need a little bit of water. So I've got my water here along with a brush. Let's get started. Now, a, a few things to know about watercolor paints is like the name uh, says, you can probably guess, I need water to make these paints work. I do not, however, want my brush dripping and soaking wet. I'm gonna make a giant mess if I do that, okay? So I recommend dampen your brush with the water, but then brush the excess water back into the cup you're working with so that you've got a wet brush, but not a soaking wet brush. So I'm gonna come in here to my paints. I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue and I'm going to do wet on dry painting. Now, as the name indicates, my paint here is very wet. My paper, however, is dry, okay? So this is called wet on dry painting because I'll be painting with wet paint on dry paper. So you'll see I create a nice rich blue and if I take a second color I can show you how watercolors blend together quite nicely so again wet paint dry paper you'll notice my colors are going to be very rich I'm going to have a lot of control over where they go and my colors are going to blend quite nicely but they're not gonna get overly combined. Only where I'm really pushing them together are they gonna blend to make green. So that is what wet on dry painting looks like and how it's done. In the next box, I will be doing wet on wet painting. You can probably guess I'm going to need to wet the paper first. I'm going to take my brush here and with plenty of water on it, I'm just gonna brush a clean wet, dry br or a clean wet brush on my dry paper here to get it a little bit more damp. Okay. So let me take my paints now with a wet brush on my wet paper and let's see what this does. 
So wet on wet painting is really useful if you're trying to create a soft and gentle blend of colors, maybe like in a sunset or uh, on the beach somewhere on the ocean. You can see my paint runs all over the paper anywhere that there was water. And you can see where I'm blending my colors together. They're blending together quite nicely, spreading out to create really soft, gentle blends. So that is wet on wet painting. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. And while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna start to work on my salt here. I'm going to, once again, do a wet on wet painting because I like my paper to be nice and wet when I'm using salt because I want the salt to stick really well. So let me get my paper nice and wet and come over here and grab a couple different colors. So I'm gonna grab orange here, spread it out on the wet paper. And just for fun, I'm gonna blend another color in there because this is for fun, this is experimenting. I can have fun. I'm gonna blend my green in. Now, while this paint is still very wet, I'm going to reach for a little bit of salt, okay? Now, this can be regular old table salt, like what you would have in the kitchen. Uh, I'm using kosher salt because it's nice and big. And you'll see if I put some here in my hand, uh, salt is just tiny little rock crystals, okay? When I sprinkle this on my, uh, my wet paint here, those crystals are going to stick into the pigment of the paint. Now, while the paint is drying, this salt is gonna create these tiny little craters in the paint. And when it's completely dry and I scrape the salt away, I'll see I've made these really cool little pockets of pigment, this really kind of interesting crater-like texture. But of, I, of course, it needs to dry before I can take a peek at it. So let this dry and we'll take a peek at it later. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that dry. And while I do, I'm gonna move my attention to the rubbing alcohol. Okay, I'm gonna take my brush here into the paint. I'm gonna paint my next section here. And this is a really fun one to blend different colors together. So I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna grab a little bit of red. I'm going to get both of those colors here in the section. Okay. Now, rubbing alcohol can also be called isopropyl alcohol, and it's just a first aid, like a antibacterial disinfectant. You can use this to like clean up a cut or a scrape if you get one. So this might be in the medicine cabinet at your house. If you do not have this, uh, you can reach for something we all probably have laying around the house right now, which is hand sanitizer. This is like 99% alcohol, so this is pretty, pretty strong stuff. I'm gonna, uh, if I'm using this, I'm just gonna squirt a little bit into a, a little bowl, mix it up with some water, so I can get something that's a little more liquidy. In this cup here, I have some rubbing alcohol and with a clean brush, I'm going to dip it into the rubbing alcohol so I can begin to paint it on top of my watercolors. Now the rubbing alcohol is reacting chemically with the paints and it's creating this cool tie-dye effect that only gets better when the uh, paint has a chance to dry. So let it dry before you go moving your paper around. And a quick note on the rubbing alcohol, I never wanna take my brush out of the rubbing alcohol and dip it into my paints. That will ruin or damage them. I do not wanna do that. Instead, I only wanna take a clean brush and from the alcohol to the paper, if I wanna use this technique, never from the alcohol to the paint. Okay, so I'm gonna clean my brush off and show you guys another cool technique using something from around the house. This is for soap. So I'm going to take my brush once again, paint my square. And then while my paint is still nice and wet, I'm going to work with a little bit of liquid dish soap. So here in this little cup, I've got some soap. You can see how sudsy it is. I really like it when the soap is bubbly. It creates a much cooler technique, I think. So I'm going to really scoop up some of those bubbles and I'm going to paint with my soap on top of my wet paint. Now, like I said, I like those bubbles, so I'm going to leave them there. I love the technique 
or the, the, the effects that it creates in my paint. So I'm going to try not to pop them. You can see it's pushing the pigment around just like the rubbing alcohol was. But similar to the salt, if I let this dry with those bubbles there, I think you're going to be happy with the results. Okay, so I'm going to leave that still just to dry, and I'm going to move on now to my wax resist. To do this technique, I'll need a crayon. I like using white crayons uh, because it just has a, a much more cool, like, secret message type vibe to it. You've probably done something similar to this in elementary school. Uh, if you don't have a white crayon, you can use an oil pastel. You could use a blue crayon, a red crayon, as long as it's something made of wax. You could even use a candle for this. I'm going to come with my white crayon and I'm going to draw on my dry paper before I start to paint any kind of cool uh, design or pattern that I'd like to draw. And again, this will work with any color crayon. I just prefer the effects of white. I'm gonna take my paint here. And I'm gonna start to paint on top of my crayon. Now you'll notice everywhere that I drew with my crayon, that wax is pushing the pigment and the paint off of it and onto the surrounding paper. So wax resists are really cool because you can create interesting designs under your painting before you paint on top of it. I'm gonna take a tissue here. I'm just gonna dry that up so you can see a little bit better what it does. There you go. Now moving on to my next uh, section here, I'm gonna be working with plastic wrap. To do this, I'm gonna take a little bit of paint I like using a lot of water for this because it gives something for the plastic wrap to hold on to. So a good amount of water, a good amount of paint here. I'm now gonna tear off a small piece of uh, plastic wrap, like what you would store your leftovers in. Uh, it can be a piece of a plastic bag. It could be a Ziploc baggie that you cut in half. Um, but it should be plastic because the plastic will not stick to the paper as it dries. So I'm going to take my plastic wrap here. I'm going to crunkle it up because I like the texture that it creates when it's crinkly. I'm going to take it back open. I'm going to lay it down on top of my wet paint, pushing it down so it sticks to the paper. And I'm going to let that just sit and dry. Okay, similar to the soap and the salt, it needs to dry for it to do its job. So I'm going to leave it be and move on to my last and final square here. Now in this box, I encourage you to experiment with multiple different techniques all at once in the same section. So if I were to say, do a wet on wet painting, so I'll take a little bit of water, paint it here, take a little bit of paint, paint it on top. I could then maybe come in with some salt, sprinkle that down on top. Well, now what would happen if I added a little bit more paint? And then used a little bit of rubbing alcohol. So now I've used three different techniques in the same section. And I can already tell looking at it, I'm going to really like the effect. So in this last box here, I encourage you to experiment combining multiple different techniques at once. We're gonna be doing a lot of this in our upcoming project. Okay, so have fun and experiment with it. And again, this all needs to dry before we can start peeling off the plastic and scraping off the salt and seeing what it looks like. So find a safe place for this to dry. Okay, and we'll take a peek at it once it's dry. Okay, way to go.